Have you ever wondered what's the best way to grip a disc golf disc to get maximum power and maximum distance? Well, this video is going to show you how. What's up you guys, Connor O'Reilly here and today we're going to talk about what's the best way to grip a disc to get maximum power and therefore maximum distance. And to me, disc golf is one of those games where, you know, it, it isn't exactly perfectly mechanical to where every single person is going to have the same exact way to do things at max efficiency, but I think it's pretty close and for the most part, without these rare cases of players just making it happen with whatever grip they kind of use, the classic four finger power grip is going to be the best way to get maximum distance on the disc and therefore have the most fun, right? Because we all want to throw fun. So let's talk a little bit about how to set it up. I'm a fan of what people talk about as the bone of pain grip where to line up the disc, you kind of put it to where the rim is sitting between your index and your middle finger. And then from there, what you're gonna do is curl your hand under the disc. And that also, when you set your fingers on that rim there, what that's gonna do is it's gonna naturally lock your wrist in a slight downward position, helping us achieve the slight nose down launch angle that we're really looking for on all of our powerful shots. And when you look at any of the best players in the world, they're throwing a slight upward trajectory, but the nose angle of the disc is gonna be slightly down on average. And that's how they're gonna achieve those fast distances and be able to keep the disc low to the ground and keep it moving forward, even though it's so overstable. So put it between, grip it nice and firm. And for me, thumb placement wise, I think there's a number of different things. I've seen, you know, Eagles pretty deep with his thumb. I've seen certain players, maybe a Nicholas Antela, a little closer to the rim. So I think as long as you're getting enough pressure throughout and you're getting a clean release, you know, whatever really works for you at the end of the day, you know, if you're winning championships and you're a top level player, you know, it's, it's a, you got a little more give or take, but if you're trying to be a better player and you want to maximize yourself, I think putting your thumb where the flight plate and the rim of the disc meet and pressing there, to me, allows you to get a little bit of almost a pocket created where you can generate some more kind of friction and create some more force there with your thumb. So I always try to put my thumb somewhere where it's gonna be able to press into the top of that flight plate and also kind of dig into that rim so that I have maximum power and maximum grip on the disc because at the end of the day we're not actually releasing the disc on a powerful shot in disc golf our hand is closed and the disc is getting pulled out of our fingers as we come through and as the disc is hinging it rips out of our fingers and our hand remains closed so knowing that theoretically the tighter our grip is the more we're going to be able to generate force um, i also like to use chalk help that disc slip out of my fingers a little bit knowing that you know sometimes having too much grip could cause some kind of a grip lock or some trust issues I want to have good grip but a little bit of chalk to help the disc slip out of my fingers and uh, I'm gripping it firm I'm not necessarily gripping it so hard that I feel like I'm flexing my bicep and my tricep and all my muscles are engaged but I'm gripping it hard enough to where I feel like kind of everything between the wrist and the elbow all those forearm muscles top and bottom are pretty rigid and uh, the disc, you know, you would have to work pretty hard to get it out of my hand. Also with the positioning, as we look from this angle, ideally there shouldn't really be any space between your hand and the disc here. But if you are trying to set an Anheuser angle, sometimes you can drop the edge of the disc down a little bit, create some space and create a little bit of pre-turned wing angle. And uh, that can help you to hold on those big long turning shots, especially if you're using an overstable driver like the new Silverback from Gorilla Performance Discs. Now, my good friend Aaron Gossage, he grips the disc, power grip, two fingers. That's part of how he gets that massive snap you hear on his fingers. And his poor little fingers over time, I, I don't know, I, I think the more surface area we can get on the disc, the more power we can create. And to me, also when the conditions get a little adverse, when it gets wet, more surface area of the hand is typically a little bit more comfortable uh, and that's kind of why if you like to throw forehand and backhand, you notice in the rain, the forehand gets a little sketchy. And I think part of that is having only a smaller amount of surface area on the disc. 
and relying on those smaller pinch points. Whereas when you have the full four finger power grip, you have a pretty nice spread area of squeeze onto the disc and that can help you in adverse conditions. Um, like I said, three finger, two finger, if you wanna try to rip it one finger, I don't think you're ever gonna win the distance championship. But if you do it pretty good and your little finger doesn't fall off, so you know, you swing away. But if you wanna be your best self and you're looking for that good distance, let's try a four finger power grip, line it up the way I told you guys, and let's let this one fly. Show y'all what it does. I'm gonna go for max distance, try to get up to the top. If I can clear it up to the flat landing over there, that's a 500 plus foot shot and a little bit of a right to left head cross. Bombs away. <clears throat> Ooh, I love the turn on that. Come on, fight out. Fighting out. Payback for me. Let's go, y'all. That was one of my best flights that I've had out of that Silverback yet. I don't know if you guys just watched the Silverback review or not, but if you didn't, go back to the last video. Check out the Silverback, see how it's flying. Or if you want a quick little review, that one was the clutch plastic a little bit softer this is the savage plastic a little bit stiffer and why not throw one more bombs away for you guys that's it for our ted talk today on how to grip a disc and here's an example on how to rip a disc hey fight it oh wow silverback has huge distance y'all there we go figuring those things out hold on i'm gonna we're gonna arrange it to the bush over there because we just pretty much got to those holly bushes, probably released it right about here's where I'm seeing my little foot divots, you know what I'm saying? Solid 460 and a head, right to left cross, you know, not the biggest distance, but that's great golf distance. And that's a lot of times all you need to score, even on the hardest courses, controllable out to 500 feet or so. Try out that power grip and see if it helps you gain more distance on the course. I'm Connor O'Reilly for Team Lone Star Disc, Team Gorilla Discs, Team OTB, and Team Discology. All my codes and all my info is in the description below, so go check it out. I'm going to be dropping more of these tips on how to be a better disc golfer throughout this season. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of private lessons, but I keep having people tell me, Connor, you got to give this knowledge to the people through the channel. And so here we are. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'm going to make it happen. I appreciate all y'all. Go show this to a friend. Tell a family member that if they squeeze it, they gonna bees it. Who are we lying to? I brought a bayonet up here and I'm a boy. And I just threw two long shots and I'm gonna see if the bayonet is longer than the silverback. Check it out. Bonus content. Hey! Ooh, fight bayonet, fight! four y'all well I hit the building but I think that thing was a bomber about 470 turnover sorry tin roof